Did you pour hundreds of hours into Diablo 4 at launch only to feel crushed when the first season wrecked your meticulously built sorcerer, rogue, barbarian, druid, or necromancer? Have you been wondering if Diablo 4 is fun now? Are there new items, new mechanics, features, and events? Before we dive into the depths of hell and re-experience the not-so-loving embrace Lilith offers, let's take a look back into Diablo 4's rise and fall and its rebirth. And is it worth coming back today? Diablo 4 takes place decades after the events of Reaper of Souls. We are crafting some of the darkest, most evil spaces that you have ever explored in a Diablo game. There's five powerful classes, three that we announced today and are playable in the demo, the Sorceress, the Barbarian, and the Druid. Once again, thank you all, and we'll see you in hell. Diablo 4 was announced at BlizzCon 2019 and was officially released for the PC, PlayStation 4, and 5 in the Xbox One on June 5th, 2023. Before the game's launch, game director Luis Barriga talked about the feeling of legacy, how they're bringing back that feeling of dread and horror from their first Diablo, with the characters and the loot chasing that Diablo 2 had, and the sweet dynamic action from Diablo 3. Paired with the reveal of three fan favorite characters during BlizzCon 2019, an open world map which showcased the barbarian, sorceress, and the druid, fans were hyped with this announcement, but that was just the first taste of what Activision Blizzard had in store for them. It would be a roller coaster of emotions for fans as by July 2021, two of the faces of Diablo 4's development, Luis Barriga and Jesse McPree, were fired amidst the controversy called the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing versus Activision Blizzard. This led to more than 20 employees reprimanded for their actions, and more than 20 employees left Activision Blizzard as part of their internal evaluation. The departure of Barriga and McCree sparked feelings in fans where they thought the game would be in literal development hell. Rumor has it that there was not a lot of direction under the leadership of both Bariga and McCree. Amidst the controversy and an ongoing health situation, fans were beginning to think that Diablo 4 was never coming out. The road to the release of Diablo 4 was a rocky one. From the controversies happening at the time and blaming the delay due to high employee turnover, the game has its share of struggles internally as well. According to an article by the Washington Post, Bariga's choice for creative director, Sebastian Stempien, I'm pretty sure I butchered his name, but whatever. Stempien. Who previously worked as a creative director for The Witcher 3 and head writer for Cyberpunk 2077, was brought in to help revise the game's story. Stempien's decisions brought a sense of unease. According to employees, there have been multiple versions of the script, including a version where a female character is forcibly interacted with brutally and eventually scrapped altogether with a female character as the employees say this does not belong in any Blizzard game. I can't say the exact word on YouTube as the algorithm does not take kind to it, however, you get the gist. The game having to undergo so many revisions to character backgrounds and not a lot of progress to game content was a problem for the studio. To quote the article, the problem with games like Diablo is that they're actually quite content heavy, said a former longtime Blizzard employee who added that the Diablo team's desire to break free from Diablo 3 meant finding new solutions to systems that the previous installment had already established. The game's initial goal of incorporating aspects from its predecessors while innovating posed a challenge to the studio. There have been multiple internal unannounced release dates for Diablo 4. At one point in time, 2021 was a suggested release date. After its announcement in 2019, a more specific release date was presented, December 2022. Developers made an appeal to move the release date and give them more time to avoid cutting out massive parts of content from the game. The team initially had moved the release to April 2023. However, the team still needed more time to finish the game. This actually speaks volume in the initial release of Diablo 4 and its first two seasons. From having a battle royale mode that was scrapped to the company losing talent due to competitive salaries and better working environments to the changing roster of management helming the game, Diablo 4 and its development team had to power through all of these challenges. After the June release date has been decided, a current Blizzard Albany employee said, we're at the point where they're not willing to delay the game anymore. So we all just have to go along and figure out how much we're willing to hurt ourselves to make sure the game gets released in a good enough state. Diablo 4 then went on to announce public testing and open betas in early 2023. The first beta was announced for players who pre-ordered the game and would be able to play the game on March 17th to 20th. An open beta was then held from March 24th to 27th. 
The beta test was available to all platforms, and during the first weekend of the beta, the only playable characters were the Rogue, Barbarian, and the Sorcerer, while during the second week, the Druid and the Necromancer were added, and players could have up to 10 characters per account. Players were rewarded with unique titles and a cosmetic called the Beta Wolf Pack, a good little boy that chills on your back while adventuring through the brutal landscape of Sanctuary. Beta players were able to grind up to level 25 and play the entirety of Act 1 during this period. However, any progress made during the beta period will not be carried over when the game releases. As the time for release was nearing, Blizzard then announced another open beta, which they called Server Slam. This beta built up more hype, especially with the added feature of being able to fight the world boss Ashava at level 20, and players would be rewarded with a special mount cosmetic, proving their mettle against Hell's gigantic artificial demon. Blizzard wasn't about to let the hype die out before the game's release as well. Their marketing efforts for Diablo 4 were nothing but spectacular. From cosplayers showing up as Lilith to multiple locations in Taiwan and Korea to a KFC collaboration, Halsey even collaborated with Suga from BTS to make a banger check and you totally have to listen to it. Diablo 4 even immortalized the first 1,000 players who reached level 100 on Hardcore and carved their names on the Lilith statue found in Blizzard Campus. Blizzard was not pulling any punches when it came to Diablo 4. Before the June 6th release, players who pre-ordered the Deluxe Edition and Ultimate Editions of Diablo 4 had a head start getting into the game. However, this was not met without challenges. Players were having issues with login queues and error codes even with the help of Rob Ferguson, a video game veteran who is known for his work with the Gears of War series and for delivering games on time and is now in charge of the entire Diablo franchise said that they were prepared for the launch however admitted that it might get a little bumpy on the first day. Some players were even met with a not valid license error but this did not deter Diablo 4's hype and early success. On the actual release day, players were keeping an eye on when they'd be able to log in. The race was on for hardcore players trying to hit a level 100 and be a part of the immortalized 1000 and for players who want to play it normally in order to beat the game and its story. Streamers were seeing major numbers in viewership, especially those who had jobs activated for Diablo 4. Blizzard announced after the first week that there had been a total of 276 million hours played since early access. It was their fastest selling game of all time. The game had a peak of 6,750,000 and 111,14 players in the month of June and had a daily average of 821,264 players. Blizzard was seeing a major success in the game they took 10 years to make. In my opinion, the gameplay was fun and the graphics were great and I enjoyed Diablo 4 mainly because I was playing with friends who enjoyed the ARPG and the MMO-ish vibe the game exuded. However, it does feel like a bare-bones beta game was sold to the public as a full release for $70. After completing the story, it was an unending grind to hit the maximum level in a very repetitive game loop of dungeon raiding without the capability of target farming or even additional content post the story aside from the Uber Lilith fight. The game had raving reviews from IGN, OpenCritic, and Metacritic, however, user reviews were tearing the game apart. Diablo 4 was enjoying a stellar month on release, however, things changed when they announced the first season, the season of the Malignant. The Malignant are relentless and without mercy. I need help. I need you. Blizzard ended up nerfing multiple classes, especially the Sorcerer, rendering builds useless making it all glass, no cannon. Another issue with the season came with the item called the Cage Heart of the Barber. The item takes all of the damage that is done by surrounding players and dishes it out at an enemy after a set amount of time. Yes, the damage is great, however, this creates an illusion that your build is strong and can tackle a lot of challenges thrown at you. Players who unknowingly socketed this into their equipment and joined world boss raids slowed the progress of the players gathered in the area. Aside from that, Blizzard decided to switch up the formula on how Helltides work. Helltide is an event that is timed for an hour where a specific area is taken over by the forces of Hell, and they will be dropping things called Aberrant Cinders which can be used to redeem rewards. The changes made were that enemies will be harder to kill and that they will be spawned 3 higher level than the player character, potentially impeding the player base's end game grind. With players seeing the nerfs of their characters and an item making things worse for other players, Diablo 4 would then see an exodus in its active player base. I'm thinking the nerfs were made so that players don't breeze through content and in a business standpoint, they want to keep players spending more hours and potentially wanting to spend on microtransactions in the battle pass. 
One main gripe I had about the changes and about the game is that it's treating it like an MMO first, action RPG second. An endless grind for items with a near non-existent endgame will absolutely put off players. Alright, I should have dodged. The mechanics are dog shit. Imagine any other developer failing to make a working resistance system on a released game. $70 by the way, and gaslighting players by pushing fixes into later seasons as if that's acceptable. It has been nearly a year since I left the game after the first season, and I heard from my friends that a new season was being launched, and that major changes were being made. Loot Reborn piqued my interest as being able to hunt for aspects and even have loot drops specifically catered for your characters makes grinding feel a whole lot better. No more picking up random stuff that doesn't work for your character and just selling them or dismantling them for materials. Streamlining the crafting slash tempering upgrading experience made it so players have the choice to optimize their character builds to how they want. Leveling up in this season also felt good. I didn't have to take weeks to level up my character and I was able to hit level 98 in around 2-3 days of playing. You'll still feel a slowdown when you get more experience but isn't as bad as release date levels of grinding. I'm also happy with some of the additions that the previous seasons implemented like being able to target farm for items in specific dungeons which was added back in season 2 and the addition of the leaderboard which was added back in season 3. Imagine having your 3 man party being on top of the leaderboards, such prestige to be honest. Season 4 does provide some level of endgame grinding and hype with the addition of the pit. I like the idea of being able to mix up the endgame experience by having the rune shards required to enter the pit drop during world bosses, nightmare dungeons, hell tides, and even the three of whispers, which felt totally useless in my opinion back in season 1. This season is worthy of some praise but not enough to glaze the game. There are a lot of bugs and issues plaguing the game as we speak. The main issue going on right now is the gold problem when it comes to masterworking your items. Upgrading your items from materials you earn from completing the pit starts to rack up towards the millions even for just a singular item. Gold does seem a little scarce in my opinion, only seeing a couple of thousand drop while fighting mobs. It doesn't incentivize players to go for higher level dungeons or pits without the reward of much bigger gold drops. It should also feel like natural progression where the stronger you get, the more gold you can come up with. This also goes for the gem crafting system season 2 added. Circling back to what I said that Diablo 4 is giving off an MMO first experience ARPG second. Another issue I have is the memory leak where menus would freeze your game or potentially disconnect you this way or if you do something too fast. This really hampers the gaming experience as you are playing an action RPG and is supposed to be fast paced. However, the memory leak can lead to potentially killing you off if you experience it in a dungeon. Places like the pit or events like Hellside are very punishing. Losing time on your quest to complete the pit or losing half of your aberrant cinders feels absolutely frustrating. Yeah. The pit monsters well hostile. Atay. Okay, let's do what my key was called. Toldurraza? Wala ni ongo tong kon. Speaking of bugs, I experienced that Smoldering Ashes did not automatically redeem itself. I'm glad that logging on and back on immediately fixed it. Another bug I totally did not enjoy happening was a bug during a fight with Torment Farshan where one of my friends was being revived and the reviver died a second before fully reviving the other player. When I tried to go back and revive my friends, one of them got kicked out of the dungeon for some weird reason and we had to restart our fight with Tormented Farshan. Diablo 4 is in a state right now where they're trying their best to win back their player base, especially with the upcoming Vessel of Hatred DLC releasing late 2024. The DLC will be adding more content to the game and will feature Mephisto as potentially the big bad for the expansion. A new region has been revealed and this could lead to more endgame content people have been waiting for. The question still stands, should you play Diablo 4 again and is the new season worth it? Short answer, yes. Long answer, yes, but if you're expecting a major innovation from the first season, well, you're gonna be a bit disappointed. Target farming should have been added since release, a more engaging endgame should have also been there for a game that's been under development for 10 years, and there are a lot of things I'd like to see in Diablo 4, such as loadouts for equipment or presets you keep so whenever you respect your skills and your paragon board, you can easily just jump back and forth from what style or build you'd like to play. Nonetheless, the game is absolutely fun, especially if you have people to play and grind with. I can see myself coming back to Diablo 4 from time to time if they keep spicing up the game like the way they did in Loot Reborn. 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this type of content and I appreciate you coming over to the channel. If you can leave a like, comment, or maybe even subscribe to let me know you enjoyed these types of videos. This has been your boy Andrew Paul and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. When we, when the when the Yeah. Did you get video of a public speaker, Mickey? <laughs> In the and and the and the and the what the fuck? What? <laughs> wow, kaya ha, oi. Kaya ha, oi. Kaya ha, oi. Kaya ha, oi.